Oh, we got hey, that. Hey, we're in. <laughs> we got the theme. We're in. Let's go. That's <laughs> We're in season two. We're doing it right now. I'm using that as the cue. We are in. We're inside of season two of ABCD. Yes. This is a podcast, folks. Okay, that's it, right? No. Yeah. It's a podcast within a live stream, and that's it, right? No, Wait, it's a podcast what? within a live stream within huh? our lives as two American-born daisies. This is a pod duckin'. This is for anyone out there who's like us. You're navigating your cultural identity, and you just want to chat it out. Welcome to the show, folks, and welcome to season two. Wow, this is great. I'm so happy to be back with you. I mean, I didn't go too far away from you specifically, Omar, because we were we were doing Daisy Quest. That's kind of why we were down yep. uh, for yep. a bit. But it is. I'm 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 of course always excited to get back into it and kind of figure out uh, our lives as American born mm-hmm. Daisies. Um, so on tap for today, we've got what what's got us confused. We got we mm-hmm. uh, that's our new sort of news segment. Um, we go some through some uh, stories that that are in the the diaspora uh, or, or stories from India or from the subcontinent. They're just like, okay, we're trying to suss this out. We're going to try to figure it out together. Uh, second up, Auntie versus Auntie Watch 2024. <laughs> Very excited about that. What is that? You're about to find out what that, that is. Auntie v. Auntie 2024. Uh, third up, we're going to interview. We got a special guest interview. Uh, with one of the India's most well-known game developers, Indrani Ganguly. So super excited about that. Omar did that interview, so it's it's juicy, right? Juicy? It's yeah. very juicy. We get some details. Okay, amazing. We get some gossip. Then we're going to play our game, which this <laughs> this week it's called Holy Ramadan, Batman. It's the Easter Bunny. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. We're back. And that's holy. <laughs> that's holy spelled H O L I. We're uh, back. For those of you familiar with the the holiday, we're gonna get into that. So it's you know it's springtime. Let's get let's get into mm-hmm. the spring festivals, uh, and then we close out with Daisy of the Week. Yes, 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 folks. Uh, before we hop into that, we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, our first sponsor of the mm-hmm. show is a is a, a little program you might have heard of called Daisy Quest. It's a Dungeons and Dragons actual play series that stars me and Sandeep, as well as so many other incredible folks. It's set in the South Asian mythology inspired universe built by star GM Jasmine, that bronze girl Bolar, with a stellar cast that also includes Critical Role darling Anjali Bamani, Dimension Twenty darling Rika Shankar. And a couple of folks uh, who pop in as guests. We are closing in on our last episode. Check it out. And if you're like, hey, you know, your recommendations, you're biased. Can you give me, I don't know, a publication that is, you know, saying that the show is pretty great? How about a a little uh, radio station called NPR? We got a shout out recently for Daisy Quest um, as uh, something to to, on NPR as as something to go check out. Yeah. So. Hashtag life goals met. I mean, that was a that was pretty wild. And by the way, like it's not like we have, you know, PR agents working around the clock trying to get us <laughs> these shout outs. Like it's pretty cool. Like really just came about organically. Like someone at NPR really loved the show and wanted to shout it out for their <laughs> their weekend. Like wh- like that's wild to me. Um, that's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty amazing. And by the way, our finale is coming out very, very soon. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's time for you to catch up. we got seven episodes yep. out right now. Get in there. Catch up on them. Uh, we might be doing some. We might be doing some uh, uh, watch parties in our in our Discord, uh, in Ooh. the FM Funny Discord at some point mm-hmm. um, to sort of help catch up together. And then we're going to uh, – the finale is going to drop shortly. <laughs> so if you want updates, check out DaisyQuest.com. That's D-E-S-I-Q-U-E-S-T. Again, that's D-E-S-I-Q-U-E-S-T. And we'll see you folks for the finale. All righty. We have another sponsor, Omar. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this. Okay. Oh, is it uh, the like a uh, uh, Lay's, Frito-Lay's? Is it Frito-Lay's? Yeah. No, <laughs> we passed on them. Okay? Yes. Um, Thank you. <laughs> You got my note. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it is. Uh, it's it is you guys at watching at home who are patreoning us as we speak. You make this possible. Um, so we're you know I'm really excited this year for the Patreon because we just started F and Movie Club, which is uh, uh, a, a way that we're going to be watching movies together to just sort of like 
help me with my research uh, in movie making because I'm embarking on a mission to make a film this year, uh, one that was written by Rekha Shankar. You may have heard of her if you're a Daisy Quest fan, and I'll be directing. So very excited about that. So if you want to sort of support, it's a big, long journey to be able to make a film. Um, and if, if, if you want to get in there and, and help out, then go over to patreon.com slash funny E-F-F-I-N funny, to join the movie club and get an insider's look at my directing process throughout this whole journey. Um, We've got multiple tiers for contribution and a handful of subscriber benefits, including uh, your name listed in the credits of this very show, which we're going to do at the end. So, you know, support a couple of daisies in the creative arts, will you? Help us keep the ABCD lights on. So head on over to patreon.com slash effing funny. And what do you got um, lined up? A fun action film like Battleship Potemkin? Yeah, like the bicycle thief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really Eisenstein is, is where we're going. We're just gonna go early. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna go through straight straight through film 101 stuff chronologically. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna regurgitate. Yeah, my my modern cultural media class from from Brown. Um, no, uh, what do we have lined up? We just watched Polite Society, which was super Ooh. cool. Um, and then I believe next up we're gonna check out the Oscar uh, award. Uh, nominated film past lives yeah uh, yeah yeah so check that out too so yeah so we got got some got some cool stuff got some cool stuff going. amazing amazing yeah. i mean amazing, the project amazing. itself just like i'll give you a little a bit, a bit of juice on 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 it um it's a it's a it, it's a sort of uh there's like a sci-fi hook but really it's a it's a story of of uh an indian, indian american girl who is Going through th- going through the very confusing grief process um, that we have laid out for us, it's like a thirteen day uh, ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that it's, it's sort of like a, you know uh, how Jewish folks will sit sit shiva kind of thing. So it, it's like littered with all of these um, these pujas and these and 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 all these rites and rituals, and it can be very confusing. Uh, so it's something that you know we've all experienced, and it's actually kind of a a, a comedy about going through that experience, and then this kind of major sci-fi event happens that I don't want to give away um, that sort of cha- flips that lens on the whole thing. So I'm really excited to, to get my hands, uh, uh, you know, in the creation of, of making this uh, really awesome film that, that Rekha wrote. So yes, go. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Amazing. And before we hop into the news, folks, we just want to wish everybody a uh, Ramadan Mubarak. Um, it is uh, the festivities start tonight. Um, it is a month of observation reflection uh meditation and also charity work um so we want to just wish everyone a very very happy ramadan right now yes um Uh, which is also partially the lend itself to the game that we're going to play later (laughs) okay okay i was wondering if we wanted to get into that okay we'll, we'll wait for the game um all right so let's get into our first segment what's got us confused All right, for the first story, um, we have an astronaut's secret wedding. (laughs) Huh? That's right. You heard me. (laughs) You heard me right. You heard me right. Um, Actor Lena announced uh, her January 17th marriage to uh, Guggenyan, I'm saying that wrong, Guggenyan pilot group captain Prasant Balakrishnan Nasir, hours after Prime Minister Miranda uh, Modi released the names of the four Indian Air Force pilots who will be on uh, this mission to to the first to be the for India's first humans uh, to travel into space. Um, so, what's kind of which is super exciting, uh, but what's kind of <laughs> wild about it is that she had to wait before revealing her arranged marriage to him to maintain the legally mandated anonymity. Um, and I think what's confusing about it is. What, but what, but why? <laughs> why? Why did they have to w- wait to be anonymous? Um, I, I, you know, it's a. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I read the article. I was, you know, relatively confused. Um, I don't know. What's your take on it, Omar? So, so it's there's like a, a st- there's a status of anonymity that needs to be maintained. Which is why you can't publicly announce a wedding. Is that correct? Yeah, but like, you know, I think I I guess the wedding happened before they announced who was going to be on the ship, right? Right. Um, but like, I don't know how finding out that they got married 
would give away that, <laughs> that he was going the to team. be selected. Yeah. Like people well, get maybe, married all the time. <laughs> maybe. Right. That's true. Like I'm thinking. Like, like, I wonder if it's, what. Yeah. Well, like, okay. Like let's say like we're announcing like uh, we're like, oh, who's going to be in the Fantastic Four? And then someone's mm-hmm. like, um, Pedro Pascal is attending a wedding. Also, he's going to be in the Fantastic Four. That would give it away. I'm I'm missing the connection here of like how of like they're just like, yeah. where are you going for your honeymoon? Space. Oh, I mean, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we're going to one of the moons of Jupiter. Oh, gosh. Did I <laughs> give that away? Uh, I think like maybe it's that, you know, and uh, forgive me. I know really that relatively little about about these folks but like maybe like his friends were like dude you know this actress lena she's so out of your league like if we announce Mm. that you got you got married to her like everyone's gonna be like oh he must have got the mission like there's no way she's marrying a not i see you're right like that's not happening yeah (laughs) so it's like (laughs) it wearing a not astronaut no no are you kidding she's not marrying some some you know, earthly bound. She's not marrying your Terran guy. ass. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Your earth bound. It's, it's celestial body. human being or, or nothing, you know, for, for you're right. I, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but it's interesting because, because, so this, so because they had to maintain this anonymity, um, mm-hmm. the parents were allowed to attend, but like their siblings were not allowed to attend. Um, and they all just sort of like, you know, we understand that like, you know, Prashant's job is, has a strict protocol. So like, we're just going to like, I don't know, zoom in. I don't even think they, they, they even did that. Like, I'm not no, sure. now I see, now I see what this is. Now I see what oh. this is. Cause there's some folks in my family that I wouldn't want at my wedding. This is a ruse. <laughs> I now uh, understand. Okay. You're right. This makes so much sense. It's just to cut down <laughs> that. Like they just didn't want the like giant Indian wedding. They were like, yes, exactly. You know, this is the best exactly. way to do it. It was for him to join a space program. <laughs> that's the way out. And be on okay. the first manned mission. <laughs> it's the only way that he could tell his mom to be like, yeah. I'm so sorry, but like, you know, uh, uh, Ramesh uncle is just not a, yeah, I, I just yeah. don't want him at the wedding. <laughs> oh, your cousin's looking forward to the wedding. Oh, you know, I, now that I think Ooh. about it, I'm going to be on the moon that night. Um <laughs> I like it. All right. So let's rate the story. Do we feel like okay. we are more informed, we are more confused, or more baffled by the story? I say informed. I that's I was gonna go informed too. Okay. Yeah. What well, yeah? Here we go. Informed. I, I, I do. I feel I feel like I kinda get it. Like they have this protocol. Yep. Yep. They're playing it safe. And he totally didn't want you know, the, the her annoying cousins to be at the wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're not attention hogs like NASA, you know, so I get it. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Are you ready for news story number two? Yeah, I am. So ready. All right. I'm just going to read you this headline. Um, and then let me, let me get your raw reaction here. Yeah, uh, please. Pigeon detained for eight months on espionage suspicions. Finally release. I'm so sorry. Pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Let me read that again <laughs> for your benefit Pigeon. and the benefit of everyone at home. Pigeon yeah. detained for eight months on espionage suspicions, finally released. Do we do we detain any other animals ever? Like, is this? Do are we in, in the business of detaining animals for any? <laughs> Like, is that okay, a thing that so happens? Why don't you go ahead? Why don't you go ahead and put a pin in that question? We'll get back to that in a second. <laughs> okay. It's funny you ask that. Right. Uh, but just to give you some some information on this, uh, police yeah. in India released a pigeon that was being held in a veterinary hospital in <laughs> Mumbai that was captured eight months ago uh, near a port after being suspected as a Chinese spy. The reason for this is because the bird had two rings inscribed with words that appeared to be Chinese attached to its legs. Uh, the vet okay. hospital uh, frequently asked, "Can we just? Can, are we done? Can we just let?" It's not because <laughs> it's not because it it like you know set up a, a life and a family there, married mm-hmm. someone you know from the land, and then like in their dreams they spoke fluent Mandarin. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and and the, and the, and like you know her her spouse was like. Uh, there's something wrong here, and she was conflicted, yeah. and had, you know, had, eventually went to the authorities because her, her brother is in the um, 
<laughs> is his yeah. top. And yes. so like, and is I looking for just, this is looking for this pigeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is crazy. It's so dramatic. the bird had two rings inscribed with the words just that with appeared Chinese to be words. Chinese attached to its legs. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the veterinary hospital kept saying, please, can we just let this pigeon go? We don't think it's a spy. Uh, we, <laughs> we don't think that this is a DreamWorks movie uh, a character. Was it can we just let this go? Like a... <laughs> what do you do with a detained pigeon? Um, the pol- <laughs> In- I mean, interrogate, obviously. Yeah. Um, the uh, 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 the uh, authorities said, no, please, you need to hold on to this pigeon. You need to get information on this pigeon until PETA stepped in. And PETA said, what are you, what are you doing? What, are you guys, <laughs> what is this? Stop. <laughs> just let yeah, this pigeon playing go. Good bird, bad bird. I just don't know. It's like you're not, not going to like yeah. it when, when the crow gets so, in here. <laughs> it turns out that this, this pigeon insane. was actually an open water racing bird from Taiwan that had escaped and made its way to India. So, not a spy, an athlete. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, I can see where the confusion is. I can see where the confusion is. Now, Sandeep, you asked, do we do this a lot? Like, you asked that earlier, right? Like, do we just yeah. capture animals and ask them if they're spies? Yeah. This isn't This isn't the first time this has happened. This isn't the first <laughs> pigeon <laughs> where this has happened. Stop. Yeah, there was one in 2020. <laughs> Uh, okay. Where a pigeon belonging to a Pakistani fisherman uh, <laughs> uh, flew across a heavily militarized border, and uh, the um, yeah. the border patrol wanted to make sure that it wasn't a spy. And then in 2016, yeah. a pigeon was taken into custody after it was found with a note that threatened Indian Prime Minister Modi. Wow. So. You know, it's true. D- Dan Wally in chat is saying, unfortunately, pigeons are historically used in espionage. I get it. I get it. It's just, wasn't that like in the 1940s? Like, are we, <laughs> like, are we still no, no, no. worried about? Don't, don't let drones take away jobs from hardworking pigeons, Sandeep. Okay. I'm a, I'm, I'm traditional when it comes to this. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, there's a union. Uh, yeah, pigeon rights. You know, I mean, like, this is, this is just a- absolutely wild. Did any of those pan out? I don't, do we know that? If any of them turned out to actually be no one of them was a fisherman fisherman's pigeon which by the way belong to a fisherman begs a and the other question. one was like, just do, an innocent do, so people have with pigeon a threatening pets? note like, to the minister <laughs> like people have pigeon pets that's another thing that i just found out right now yeah um oh yeah and then and then they can also write notes yeah apparently yeah yeah so this does make me ask a lot of questions about the pigeon lady from home alone and I am wondering, yeah. what's her deal? Do you feel? Uh, how do you feel about this story now, Sandeep? Do you feel like you uh, you're informed, you're baffled, or you're confused? I am baffled. I'm a little baffled. <laughs> I mean, I'm somewhere between b- baffled and a little just like confused because I guess it's just you know, it just seems like really hyper vigilance, you know, going mm-hmm. on here when we're really eight months. About... Eight months is eight a long months. time to be interrogating a pigeon. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I hope, I hope the pigeon was fed well, some good bird mm-hmm. seed. I hope the pigeon mm-hmm. was well taken care of. I mean, it sounds like they were holding him in a vet hospital. So I guess that's something. Exactly. Um, exactly. All right. How, what about you? Where are you at? I feel informed. I have no questions. <laughs> you, no questions. You're just, you get it. It makes sense to you. Listen, I don't want to get into it too much, but like, this I is might have some pigeons out there. <laughs> Yeah, Wait, exactly. And that's not you important. Have pigeons out Why there? don't we move on? Why don't we move on to uh, uh, news story number three? <laughs> if, you know, this tree by my house has been squawking a lot lately. I've been hearing a lot of ac- activity. Oh yeah, but we've been, hearing, we've been we've been hearing activity you've been up to as well. You, are you so, watching? what would you say is the what was the next uh, news story that uh, <laughs> that we're on. looking okay, at? Here. Fine, we're looking at no, story number three here. Is uh, uh, is cinema India's new political battleground? Okay. Yeah. Okay, go on. Okay. So this one's this one's kind of wild. Uh, okay. So th- there's this movie, Article 370. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, it's <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the trailer or anything like that, but it's um <clears throat> okay. This movie 
it has a lot of sort of uh, it's it's about the uh, uh, this article three seventy is about what, what's going on in Kashmir, um, okay. and Prime Minister Modi came out saying it's not a documentary; it's like an action thriller film. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and it mo- basically Modi came out and and said he supports the movie. It sort of sort of begs the question of like. And, and it's become highly politicized, right? Like there's this okay. ongoing conflict in, in, in Kashmir for sure, you know, sure. independence or the border dispute between whether it should be Pakistan's country or whether it should be it, or India's. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of strife there. So uh, this movie comes out. It's very much from the perspective of uh, <laughs> of like – it's India's perspective on it. Okay. Um, or at least, you know, sort of Hindu Indians' perspective on it, and then Prime Minister Modi is like, "Yeah, you should totally go see this film and supports this film." Okay. Like, the question, sort of, what's got us confused about it, or what we're thinking about, is like, you know, if a politician comes out and says they love a film, mm-hmm. or a president specifically, or mm-hmm. prime minister specifically comes out and says they love a film, does that immediately make it propaganda? I guess is sort of. The question. Well, he's an objective viewer, right? Like, he doesn't have anything to do with this movie. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Go he's on. Very, he's like, I, I mean, I don't think he, so. I, you watch the movie, and basically, he's a character in the film. <laughs> okay, as far as I'm that... concerned, I, I, as, far, as far as I get from the trailer, it's uh-huh. like you see, like, like it's like, okay, this is like very much, like I said, this movie in particular. Okay, here, here's my, here's where I'm, I'm sort of okay. debating on this thing. It's like, this movie in particular seems like it's got a political agenda to it. <laughs> So it's already it's inspired by true events and yeah. then in quotation marks, free Kashmir. Yeah. So it's already got a political perspective going on in a way. Mm-hmm. It's somewhat propagandized already. Sure. Um, and then yes, to have a uh, prime minister say, Hey, you should like, everyone should see this movie that definitely cements it as prop it propagandizes the movie. Right. Right. Um, but if this was, Fast and the Furious 6. Okay. Or whatever number they're up to now. 28. Mm-hmm. Um, where it's like, has nothing really to do with politics. If Prime Minister Modi was like, that's a good flick. You should go see it. I don't think that tr- immediately turns that movie into propaganda. I will say the Fast and does the it? Furious does movies. It? The Fast and the Furious movies might be the only franchise that's maybe an exception <laughs> to the rule of a politician endorsing... <laughs> Uh, that's the only to be propaganda <laughs> okay okay yeah i think like like if it was like battle so dr strange something... propaganda <laughs> i mean yeah uh <laughs> how where you get that magic from yeah. so um no that's an interesting question okay so uh, let's 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 actually entertain the question if a sitting leader of a government says go check out this movie mm-hmm. and it's like go check out curious george the film does that make it propaganda? Yeah, I would say no. Right? Yeah, I guess if it's if it has nothing inherently immediately political yeah. in it, then yeah. But right? this one is a different case because this would be if like Teddy Roosevelt was like, go see the movie Teddy Roosevelt is a baller president <laughs> out in theaters right now. That is a then sweet that film, does though. become Dude, have you seen Teddy Teddy Roosevelt is a baller president for? Yeah, I have. Uh, and I think yeah. that the tie-in with Airbud Bud was impressive. <laughs> uh, yeah, good interesting. Stuff. So, for example, Richard Nixon's favorite movie was mm-hmm. Patton, the movie about General George S. Patton. <laughs> right. right. Would that be propaganda for him to say, that's my favorite movie? Um, what if his favorite movie was the one about Watergate? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> All the presidents. <laughs> yeah. All the presidents I think that's Gerald Ford's favorite movie. Like... That is such a What's, weird twist of fate. He's like, you know what? It's hey. He's like, I don't agree with what they're saying, but damn, it's is just a good a, flick. Absolutely, picture perfect film. I mean, great, great writing, filming. great acting, great, yeah. <laughs> great composition. I just, pacing is strong. Like, I just really think, you know, it's tricky. It's Dick, flick. what would you say is your favorite movie? <laughs> Frost Nixon. Really? <laughs> <laughs> How much of it did you watch? <laughs> oh man, that'd just be interesting. A, interesting. Interesting. 
Um, well, I would say I'm a, I'm I'm a little confused if I'm if I'm honest. Uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look a little bit more into the sort of legalities of this, if that makes sense. I mean, it's what a, yeah. What a leader is allowed to say if they are in it and, and use their platform to promote something that they're in. Yeah, I don't think he's. I think he's depicted in it, right? Um, I'm not uh, yeah, sure I would say yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be <laughs> that'd be insane. Maybe he if he was like know, check out my is... acting. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. would be interesting. But I think. Um, he, yeah, I, th- I, I'd say I'm in the same sort of confused state as well. I don't know enough, uh, but I do think it's probably not great for, say, the the industry. Uh, like, if Hollywood was just producing stuff at the behest of the president, that would probably be not, not good. I'm looking up. This is this is gonna right. this is gonna determine my answer. I'm I'm searching something right now okay. on an internet search engine, and what I'm searching is was Arnold Schwarzenegger hmm. governor when Tell he made more. around the world in eighty days. <laughs> he was in that movie. This was Arnold Schwarzenegger's last movie before being elected governor of California. So Amazing. he made around the world in eighty days. He's elected governor, and if he tells yeah. people to go see around the world in eighty days, does that make around the world in eighty days propaganda? I mean, it makes it him a shill for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah he, there's definitely a conflict of interest. Yeah, he can't he can't use the platform to be like selling movie tickets in that respect. So I guess yeah, maybe that's a state of, of the union. I think you go you should go see my yeah. movie, the remake of Around the World in Eighty Days. Yeah, amazing. All right, <laughs> well that wraps up our new segment, but we've got another segment that is also touching on the news. Are you ready for this? So Welcome ready. to. Unti versus Unti Watch 2024. We gotta explain this. Yeah, we do. We gotta, we gotta we explain this. Please. Okay. So, what is Unti versus Unti Watch? Okay, look, this may have been a little bit more relevant somewhat recently, but there's still possibility this could happen. So, yeah, 2024. Still relevancy. You guys, you guys might be a little bit aware of what's going on. There's a presidential election here in the U.S. Um, now. The crazy thing that we sort of recognized was there was a chance. There's an outside chance mm-hmm. that the remaining two, if basically something you know horrible happened for Biden's health and it went sideways, uh, he had to step out of the race or worse, which knock on wood, right? We don't wish that upon anybody. But if that happened, Kamala Harris would be probably you know the next. In line, in line to be the, the nominee to run. for the Democratic Party. So there was that there was a chance that mm-hmm. Auntie Gamalanti, mm-hmm. Gamalanti, yeah. Auntie number one could have been because yeah. she is part Desi, as you know, she's mm-hmm. she's half Desi. Um, so that's that's contestant number one, and then yeah. Nikki Haley was mm-hmm. doing pretty well for a hot mm-hmm. minute there, kind of if you could define the word well as as winning Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the remote beautiful finally. colors in the fall at least the last woman standing you know against mm-hmm. trump and trump's got 91 indictments against him okay <laughs> yeah right? that's not looking good and i don't know <laughs> last i checked it was going to be pretty challenging for a, a, a convicted you know he's getting up to he's getting to up run. to dalmatian numbers and that's where you <laughs> yeah. have to start being like this is a lot <laughs> there's a lot so there's a world in which he is you know not allowed to be president Mm -hmm. or not not allowed to run and so and nikki haley also desi so Mm -hmm. auntie it could be kamala auntie versus nikki auntie Mm -hmm. that that, there's a world in which and that's what the auntie versus auntie watch is all about there's still that possibility (laughs) right yeah so so exactly so every episode what we're gonna do is we're going to check in and see how close we are to Auntie vs. Auntie 2024, which makes this <laughs> yeah. the Auntie vs. Auntie Watch 2024. There you go. Uh, so let's get some quick updates real quick uh, with Nikki yeah. Haley. As you said, uh, she has recently suspended her presidential race after Trump won Super right. Tuesday, uh, which a lot of people called Snoozer Tuesday, uh, but did not endorse him. She said Trump would have to earn her uh, earn her voters' support or her, her backers' support. She did um, not, not so, endorse him, but yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, ex- yeah. So it, this is an interesting spot that she's she's reserving. She has simply suspended her campaign, which keeps Auntie versus Auntie Watch 2024 still alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, let's just you know, let's in terms of the history and in terms of the United States of America, uh, you know, Nikki Haley became the first Asian American woman to ever seek the Republican presidential nomination and get to the stage of the conversation. Uh, so that's wow. the update on on Nikki okay. Haley. Uh, how about our how about the other auntie? <sighs> that's yeah, so f- on the the, the Kamala side of things, um, you know, she's she's currently the VP for Biden. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, th- look, there's still chatter that he might drop out of the race, or like I said, father father time comes for him. Um, and uh, look, Harris has spent a lot of this year on the road. She's touring the country. She's mobilizing voters on issues mm-hmm. central to the campaign. She's like, you know, outspoken about reproductive rights, and. Voters are concerned. Voters are worried about Biden's age. That's obvious. You know, uh, in an interview with the Wall Street Journal, Harris said, I am ready to serve. There is no question about that. She said that. She said, mm-hmm. I am ready to serve. There is no question about that. So, look, I think there. She, she's not saying it's not impossible. It's, you know, mm-hmm. we may not be. We, we nev- may not be right there, but mm-hmm. you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. So, folks, there's a lot of really important and serious and crucial um, uh, elements and topics within this presidential uh, conversation uh, for this year's election. And we want to take those very, very seriously. And we'll probably dedicate segments uh, on future episodes uh, to kind of dive into those, uh, whatever we do. Um, But when it comes to Auntie vs. Auntie Watch 2024, we want to cement that we are here for this particular narrative, we are invested and we want all of yes. you to be equally invested in Auntie vs. Auntie Watch 2024. We are going to ask That's your right. help with this. We need some sort of diagram or icon, maybe a clock to see how close we are to Auntie vs. Auntie 2024. Maybe it's a countdown. Maybe it's a maybe it's a ladder. I, I like the, clo- I like the, the clock. And I think, yeah. I think we should ask chat. To go ahead, mm-hmm. based upon what we just said, right? Like Nikki Haley, mm-hmm. she's suspending her. She, you you know mm-hmm. that she's still like holding out some hope that yeah. the, one of these indict, indictments are going to work out in her favor. Like that's why she was the last person standing. Like there is a chance. So for so where does that land us on the clock? Um, and then obviously what we said about Kamala and and you guys watch the State of the Union. You know how are you how are you feeling about Biden? So I'm curious, you guys live in chat right now on the scale of essentially one to twelve. Mm-hmm. Where do you think we are with clock. auntie versus? So we'll say, and we'll say, twelve, right? Is that's a clock? Twelve is, uh, right? Like it's it's happened basically. That that's, it's that, over. That's, that it's as far that, as possible. like it is on like it is auntie versus auntie. Like oh, like, one o'clock. 12. One o'clock is auntie versus auntie. Oh wait, one o'clock is auntie versus auntie. Oh no. Okay, so this is now confusing. See, this is where it's important. <laughs> so we're like midnight. So on the doomsday clock. Yeah, Midnight yeah. is okay, when it. yeah. it's like this is nuclear war. Yeah. This is it. the yeah. opposite for us of the of the doomsday clock, but do we still want to keep midnight is the time? Like it, midnight is when the clock strikes auntie versus auntie. Or well, we're saying doom or are we wait, I like this. So are we saying that, that Wh- the doomsday doomsday is the midnight is oh no, it's Trump versus Biden, is what we're saying. And that one o'clock is it's, so it's a reverse doomsday clock. Oh, so one. Okay, great. So it's actually one p.m. So we're getting into the afternoon. So we're, okay, here's what it is, folks. Now we're gonna That's clarify, and this is the <laughs> That's final too crazy. answer. Wait, I'm this not the, saying I'm asking answer. you that. This is no. Okay. I like this, and let me. This is okay. why because midnight is our darkest hour. Okay, so midnight right. is the doomsday clock. One p.m. is so chai time. <laughs> So that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get away to get from midnight. Time. We're trying to get to chai time. Got it. So are we already at midnight or are we already yeah. at 11 o'clock? So so chat, get in there. I want to hear what you guys think. And then maybe by the end of our next segment, we will decide mm-hmm. where we are at. Does that sound Beautiful. good? Beautiful. Let's find out and we'll mark it. Okay. All right, folks. Well, we have an amazing segment uh, that we uh, have thrown together for you guys. We are so excited to chat with our incredible friend, Indrani, who was just featured in Vogue India 
uh, for a ton of their incredible work in the gaming space. Andrani is one of my favorite people on the entire planet. Uh, I got the chance to sit down with Andrani and chat. Uh, we are about to show you that interview. Um, and then we also play a game with Andrani where, um, honestly, she kind of she kind of hands her asses to us in terms of our <laughs> categories and how we approach them in yeah, this versus right. that. Uh, but it's a real great time. We um, have actually, we Andrani and I talk so much all the time that there is a full 40-minute interview that uh, we chopped down for this segment. But if you want to check out the full interview, uh, we'll tell you how to do that right after the segment. But for now, let's uh, hop on over to the interview with Andrani. Hello, Andrani. How's it going? Hello. Hello. It's going well. It's quite early. It is literally just white outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know it's morning. It's, it's there's no morning. color outside. It's just okay. light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I look that way, I'll be blind. <laughs> Um, so this is so wonderful. We we want to chat with you about so many things. Um, but first and foremost, uh, sort of a big thing happened recently. You're in Vogue India. I'm in Vogue India, which is on on the list of statements I would make throughout the entire course of my life. Was now like something I planned for. But yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> there's an article about me and mm -hmm. and three other incredible people from India who are working in video games in different capacities. Yes. Um, and I'm one of the four people who the Vogue article talks about. Um, and yeah, I got to do like a very fun, fancy like photo shoot for it. They asked me some really lovely questions. The author, her name is Pritika Rao. She mm -hmm. came in from like this perspective of someone who kind of grew up loving games, but always feeling like, do I have place in this like, you know, yeah. hobby? That and, and eventually decided that she didn't, who was like, okay, let me revisit it. And mm -hmm. this was her revisiting it by speaking to other femme folks who've been who've been uh, working in the space. The thing that, I, that really excites me about it is that um, some of the most creative games that are coming out of India, so like two of the other people, including myself, uh, we are all, uh, you know, creative leads at different uh, video mm -hmm. game studios. Um, and there's just something really interesting about the way that the Indian game dev scene is growing is that a lot of like the sort of interesting things that people are doing are coming from studios that are led by women and minority folk. And I think that mm -hmm. like minority folk in India, with, yes, you know, specific caveat. Um, uh, so I think it's really cool to see them being highlighted and, you know, myself being highlighted. This is incredible. Can we talk about the fact that you have a game studio? Cause that is yes. amazing. It's very scary in that, like, <laughs> it is it is never a good time to make video games or, or right. games full stuff. I sure. Think. Like, it always feels like the whole world is on fire in one way or another. And, like, <laughs> that's yes. Wh what business do I have making games when, like, mm -hmm. everything, you know, gestures vaguely is going <laughs> on? Um, so we started the... Well, we started the game studio with mm -hmm. me having this game idea uh, that I wanted to work on. Um, and working in game dev, like I've been doing that for, gosh, upwards of five years now. Right. Um, but I've always wanted to be a designer in my own right. And I've done mm -hmm. that in small and big ways with like t tabletop RPGs. And, um, you know, I've written for some other uh, games as well. But I never thought that I had like all of the pieces I would need to make my own. And then mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, just this one thing, I want to really make it. And um, I was like, wait, I'm friends with a really good programmer, mm -hmm. a really great artist, and Look another incredible writer. Yep. And between the four of us, we could maybe swing this. Um, so I pitched it to them and they were like, yeah, but we've never made a, we've never shipped a video game. Like we've never completed it and put it out into the world. What do we do? Um, and I was like, well, let's just try it. Let's just make a much smaller project and we'll do it over four days. We did like an internal game jam. So at the end of four days, we were like, we should have a finished from scratch game. That was not Got the big original idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And people do that. People do that shit all the time. Sorry, am I allowed to <laughs> curse on this show? I, oh, you, I, oh, a hun oh, in this show, 100%. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so people do that all the fucking time. And, and, and yeah. I was like, we, we can do this. We can do this. Um, and end of day one, it was not looking good. I'll tell you that much because we had one blue screen and 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 
just a few buttons and we were like uh-huh. okay maybe we maybe this is a text adventure and maybe we're we're, we're idiots for wanting to <laughs> yeah. do this it's retro um, yeah but at the, <laughs> yeah it's but at the end of day four it looked like a real actual video game and we put it out in the world and we were like cool okay so this works we can do Amazing. it now we just need to do it at a much bigger scale so other than that it's been great uh, our first project is shaping up quite nicely um it's a game called uh, The Line and it's a game where you play as someone who's dividing a land that is unfamiliar to them and it's uh, inspired by the partition of India and like that's mm-hmm. kind of the extent of the detail that I can go into but it's a you know it's a serious sort of like papers please style um, yeah. game so yeah that's what we're making the way you present yourself is very honest and genuine and I feel like the art that you make and the projects you work on reflect it as well. So it's just, this is just good. Uh, it just makes me so happy that you also are getting recognized by such a huge publication. This is, this is huge for you. This is huge for also us, uh, the fans oh. of you. <laughs> That's, oh my God. Oh my. No. It's, it's so it's funny. Amazing. As I look around, I'm like, I have so much of stuff that you've made that's like around my desk and just like in my room. <laughs> so I'm glancing around. Which also you uh, give to me for free. So I am also like this pack rat. So thank you for hooking me up with like a bunch of your dice. Um, dude, of we're, course. <laughs> we're going to hop into a game, speaking of dice, in a second. But first, um, real quick before we do mm-hmm. that, uh, where can people check out your studio? Where can people check out the things you're working on? And where can people kind of get hyped up about your game? Uh, yeah, I think the best way of staying in touch with me is probably social media. If you're a degenerate like me and still use Twitter, I am <laughs> at Nanakon Dice on Twitter. And my game studio is called Duranto Games. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, all of these platforms. Oh, this is this is so great. I obviously cannot wait to, uh, to hear uh, of your continuing success and get to play um, all your uh, the projects that you're, you're working on and will uh, come out with in the future. Um, but for now, you get to actually play a game that we've thrown together, uh, right, which is where we <laughs> we pose an American thing against something we consider a Daisy thing, and you have to okay. choose the stakes of this is just to give you you know like what you're playing for. Uh-huh. What you choose, in the winner of these two things is the winner. Yeah. The loser gets erased from history. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. That sounds okay. amazing. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that very much. That power to be like this or that and the other thing yeah. goes. My God, exactly. that's great. Exactly. Are you ready for this? I am ready. Round number one, chai versus coffee. Coffee. Wait, oh, in- is coffee an American <laughs> thing? Because that's not true. All right, back up. A little bit of history. Um, <laughs> South Indians, all right? We make really good coffee. There are some incredible coffee uh, roasteries and estates based out here in India. So you're saying this doesn't even count. This is actually yeah, not. This the, isn't an this, American. This question yeah. doesn't work because Americans, <laughs> A, do coffee poorly. Okay, I've tried a lot of American coffee. It doesn't work. You guys over it. It's burnt. So when I say coffee, I mean Indian. Wow. Not American. Not North American coffee. South Americans do coffee really well. But... Sorry. Wow. Us in Canada just got roasted. That (laughs) is tough. Okay, round number two. (laughs) Sitar versus guitar. Sitar. I mean, come on. My... Okay, look. Um, String instruments generally have so much variety and so much incredible stuff you can do with it, but I think Mm -hmm. the sitar almost feels like a precursor to, like, modern day uh, instrumentalization right and mm. i really know a lot about this right now because for the game we're making you know we're using a lot of string instruments for the music production mm-hmm. and uh, one of the things we've been considering is like how do we uh, incorporate like carnatic music and and like even um you know bengali hindustani music in mm-hmm. the game mm-hmm. and we've been doing a lot of deep dives into what string instruments would would sound like and you know what the vibe we want is and um guitars i mean great you know <laughs> love it <laughs> happy that they exist if somebody never did wonderwall at a campfire <laughs> wouldn't we all be better off for it round number three bollywood and dollywood versus hollywood oh th- okay this is interesting right mm. um because when we say bollywood and dollywood let's change mm. the framing of that let's say okay 
uh, Bollywood and South Indian cinema. South Indian yeah. cinema encompasses Tollywood, Kollywood. So like films that are coming yes. out of you know uh, Karnataka, Kerala, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, mm-hmm. Telangana. Right? These films, chefs kiss, class of their own. Right? Like okay. we do mass really well. We do like really like Malayali films do like a lot of incredible storytelling that's very important. Sorry, can we get real like communist in here? Wait, <laughs> let's okay. get real communist real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's this like uh, Marxist film theory where uh, mm-hmm. it talks about how films. Sorry, I know this is supposed to be lightning. I can't help myself. Um, <laughs> the questions: Why art is made? Like, are you, mm-hmm. when are you making art that basically? Uh, what's the word? Subjugates is a strong word, but in the mm-hmm. sense that when is the viewer is the oppressed class being continuing to stay oppressed and not thinking about yes. their. Uh, uh, state it, by consuming this, then should yeah. it exist? And a lot of film from the south, especially Malayalam films, like sort of like adapt that ideology. A lot of like anti-caste right. films are all coming out of South India. Bollywood, I think, is emblematic of a lot of problems that yeah. exist, like in in this country. That like you know, so can we do this or that or that? And I'll say South Indian films will keep, and the other two can okay. go. Okay, yeah, a hundred percent. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. this one this one is a really simple one um, that will not require any conversation or uh, diving uh-huh. into any um, specifics. Love it. Uh, we'll <laughs> see about that, Omar. Okay. <laughs> Why did we include this one for you? Polytheism versus monotheism. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> this was a... All right. Well, you said 15-minute <laughs> segment, and you're making it very hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> so... Either or seems like a a difficult thing for me to. It's so nuanced. How do you uh, this or that? Something like something like. Wow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I think both historically have had their merits and and demerits. I think India mm-hmm. as a country, um, right now, we're getting less and less secular each day. I think because right. of like the current people in power and um, yeah. I I think that I fear the kind of tool um, religion can be in terms of like yeah. radicalizing people because like here now a secular country suddenly wants to be well not suddenly right it's years of, years mm-hmm. of like mm-hmm. build mm-hmm. up to this but wants to be a Hindu Rashtra and like there's yeah. something very gross about that when I'm surrounded by people from like multiple faiths with multiple different ways of viewing God and spirituality um, and I think I cannot in good faith be like this or that without you know taking away some of those experiences so i yes i you know both can go or neither can go you know? <laughs> is, is that an option let's uh, go for it i think that's the safest yeah. one here yeah because it's yeah. also when we do when we do the baits if i'm not mistaken i think that we were also like i mean like do you want to get rid of the lore of battlestar galactica so like it's <laughs> we we did expand outside so look look i'm glad to be your guinea pig but this is the answer you're getting <laughs> Okay. Well, this if religion must pro- exist, then mm-hmm. it must exist in a way that everybody can use, like you know, in a way that works for everyone. I think that's beautiful. And then finally, here's the last one. Okay. Yes. I think this one is equally as sort of deep and philosophical and Jesus entrenched though. in human existence. Um, ketchup versus chutney. Again, broken question because chutney <laughs> is an umbrella term. So mm-hmm. let's 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 funnel down right okay. there is a <laughs> way of making tomato chutney in andhra mm-hmm. pradesh it's called uh it's called tomato pachadi mm-hmm. and it is spicy and garlicky and delicious and you can have it with dosa you can have it with idli you can have it with whatever you want and it is infinitely infinitely better than ketchup all right infinitely <laughs> i will say i've had really good ketchup like in in all fairness like mm-hmm. when it it's the right amount of fermented it's the right amount of sugar it's the right amount of like spice it Ketchup can be good. I'm a ketchup girl. But mm-hmm. if only one could stay, I mean, come on, right? Like, okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's so much not great ketchup. So, yeah, you know. there's so much not. Exactly. For yeah. ketchup to be good, Yeah. there's a lot of things that need to go right. For chutney to be good, you just gotta have like a blender, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all you need for good <laughs> chutney. That's so funny. Andrade, thank you so much for playing our game of this versus that. Thank you for uh, letting my hubris about being like your game's wrong 
you know, play out. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, could you remind the wonderful folks um, uh, yes. watching this stream uh, and also listening at home uh, via podcast where they can find you and all the wonderful things you do? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can find me everywhere on the internet as at Nonagon Dice. That's N-O-N-A-G-O-N-D-I-C-E. Um, that's on Twitter, Instagram, um, Blue Sky, whatever. Um, and... and uh, Duranto Games, you can find us again everywhere on the internet as at Duranto Games. That's D U R O N T O G A M E S. Duranto Games. Um, that's us. So hit me up. You are a joy. You're a wonder. You are also changing things um, in ways that we're all benefiting from so much. So thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, thank you thank for you. being my friend. Thank you for being on the show. We absolutely adore you. You are previous Daisy of the week, so getting to actually have a segment where we sit down with you and chat this is, is true. a dream come true. Thank so. you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Fred. I love you so much. This what a what a wonderful way of hanging out. We should. I'm I'm glad to see your face and just. I'm glad to see up. your face. All right, we'll do this in person Aww, soon. We'll do this. Yes, yes, soon. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, checking out that interview we got to do with Andrani. Um, now, here's the thing. Indrani and I chatted so long about what uh, game development is like in India, um, what they're up to. Um, also, there was a really fun story about the photos uh, that appeared in uh, Vogue India um, because those weren't Vogue photographers. They didn't send any photographers. Indrani got those pictures taken care of um, on her own. Uh, and if you want to know more about that, <laughs> if you want to know wow. more about that, which That's is wild. Tease. Um, we're yeah. going to put the entire interview up on our Patreon as a Patreon exclusive. Um, so check that out because also um, Indrani shares so many beautiful tidbits that just feel so much like this show about um, encouraging yourself in the arts and how to think through um, your fears instead of feeling them and how to just go for it, how to go for your goals and do what you want. Uh, they are an incredible human being. Um, so check out that full interview over on Amazing. our Patreon. Killer. Um, all right. Well, it is time to move into our game segment, the ABCD game. Mm -hmm. Holy Ramadan, Batman, it's the Easter Bunny. Holy <laughs> Ramadan, Batman, it's the Easter Bunny. <laughs> all right. Sure that title would get, you know, Rob in a lot of trouble. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, our Game Master Delvin will present us with a series of three statements. Each set include two lies and one truth about a springtime holiday. We must each guess the truth, and whoever is right earns one point. Yeah, and just to be clear, right, like we mm -hmm. have, th like there's kind of these three holidays that hover around our, our, our lives around this time, you know, as, mm -hmm. as uh, South Asian Americans. Um, Holy, which is the Festival mm -hmm. of Colors, the... Uh, you know, this is the time where we're grinding. Um, we're grinding. That's a weird place to stop. We're, we're always grinding. Uh, we're uh, <laughs> uh, gr grinding flour, <laughs> flour, flour into this you know, beautiful multicolored powder, and then mm -hmm. we throw it all over each other. And it's kind of a time for, for forgiveness and fun and connection. It's pretty pretty great uh, holiday for uh, those in uh, those of Indian descent. Um, and then, I mean, do you want to speak to to Ramadan a little bit? Um, from your perspective, like, do you guys celebrate much? Yeah, absolutely. My dad is Muslim, although uh, non-practicing, but also uh, I grew up with uh, a ton of Muslim friends. And so Ramadan uh, for me was a time where while I personally didn't fast, it is a time of fasting, of contemplation, of reflection, as well as uh, activating on the um, pillars of Islam which, as we you know, mentioned at the top of the show, includes stuff like um, charity work and, and giving to charity. Um, and also just a, a time of gratitude and to essentially to kind of slow down and um, be grateful and happy uh, for what we have and what we can celebrate with each other. Uh, so it's a beautiful time that then, you know, ends um, with Eid, uh, which is a huge, huge celebration. And then Easter is a time where you get crayons, I think, from your brother because he <laughs> hid them in the closet. <laughs> Um, and, uh, I was pretty psyched to get a pack of 128 Crayola crayons for Easter what? when I was eight. Yeah. That's what you I got that many. <laughs> that, yeah. It was like the, it was like the big, the big, the chunky pack, the big one, the one that was like a brick. Very, very excited about that. Um, you my know, folks, <laughs> my, my, 
I don't want to undersell like how much like in my earlier years, like my mom did go out of her way to just throw an incredible like Easter, Easter bunny Easter. But yeah. also like um we did go to church. You did? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. mom was like, Well, look, if you're gonna do if you're gonna you gotta earn your eggs. <laughs> so Nice. Uh yeah, yeah, we we just went straight to the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> straight straight to the hunt it was all about that yeah that was i i personally lo- always loved that holiday uh growing up i mean it's about more than that for a lot of people <laughs> i'm just letting That's you know how it was for true. us okay i just like, i didn't even honestly for, i did not know anything about resurrection or any of that stuff for the longest time i was like the easter one is resurrected what i had no clue uh <laughs> Okay. Meanwhile, I was anyway. in my Sunday best at mass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at, at at six a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I was like, "Let me eat this sh- uh, this this stuff that kind of faux looks like egg yolk, but is delicious and sugary." Um. <laughs> and then they changed the recipe. Ah. So well, sad. we'll find out if there's right. questions about that because now Delvin is going right. to give us three facts, and we got to guess which one's true. All right. So first up, we have holy. Okay. Okay. So you are three possible lies. One of these is true. Is holy is celebrated in all states in India except one, Nagaland. Okay. Oh. During Lathmar holy, men in Vrindavan are beaten by women with sticks. Or Hell yeah, the ladies. easiest way to make natural red hair, natural red color during holy is using beets. Only one of these is true. Oh, only one is true. Oh, okay. So it's it's two lies. The and other truth. two are lies. Got it. Two lies and truth. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna go. Mm, interesting. Ladies, leave your men at home. I'm saying it's uh, the true one is that the guys get hit with sticks. So guys get hit with sticks, beats for hair dye, and then. Oh, just for red color, not for hair dye. Re- yeah. Red. Just color. for red color for holy. They use beets, huh? I don't think that's true. I think they use for the red color flower, if I remember correctly. Um, wow, and I didn't know that you the... Like the Martha Stewart of like holy powder. <laughs> Listen, I got the kids' book and we read it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and they go through each flower, what color it makes, and they said it was hibiscus makes red. Okay, um, and, and what was the what was the sorry what was the first one? It was like Nagaland. What was it that it was mm-hmm. only celebrated? Uh, the, in one yeah, state? the first one is that holy is celebrated in all states in India except for one Nagaland. I'm I'm gonna go with the beats. This is a lie, right? We've got some beats and Omar's going beating. Mm-hmm. Correct. Be- mm-hmm. Beating. Wait, wait, wait. Sandeep, you're finding you're looking the, for the truth. truth. You're oh, not looking oh, for the sorry. Lies. God, I keep, geez, I keep forgetting. Gosh. Okay, yeah. Well, I want to. Can I pick the same thing, or am I allowed to? You can do whatever you want. You can pick the same thing. I'm gonna pick the same thing. I think it's the stick beating. Maybe You're it's right. aspirational. <laughs> As it is, yes. Yes. The correct okay. answer is okay. during lots more holy men and we did it, Joe. Are by women we did with it. sticks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I'm such a bad Indian right. man. Like, I didn't even know is not. I didn't even know Nagaland was for a both. state. I really like. That's how. Bad. <laughs> you don't have is... to admit that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> You've got the point. <laughs> you don't have to like, do this. <laughs> I just. I'm like. I'm looking it up right now. Okay, it's in the like. It's in like the 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 left arm of India. That I, that's mm-hmm. what I call it. The one that's like mm-hmm. leaning on the on the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, um, India always looks cool. like it's like hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's got like a toothpick in its mouth. So, <laughs> Tough guys. And that is the first round of Holy Ramadan Batman. It's the Easter Bunny game. To hear the rest of the rounds and to find out who has to give the concession speech as the Easter Bunny, who's the loser, and I'm not going to give away who that is, I'll tell you this. It's either me or Omar. So uh, <laughs> then please join our Patreon to hear the rest. So jump on over to patreon.com slash effing funny. Join at any level, and that's going to give you access to the rest of this game. All right. Back to me. Good stuff. All right. Oh now God. it is time for our final segment of the episode, the Daisy of the Week. That's right. This week for our Daisy of the Week, we'll be honoring the eight-year-old who beat chess grandmaster and set a new world record. This is Ashwath. Kashik. Yes. Eight years, six months, and 11 days. 
This, this, this little genius became the youngest player ever to defeat a grandmaster in a classical tournament game. That's right. And if you're saying that this is a Nebo baby case, you're wrong. Neither parent totally, is a right? chess player. What? <laughs> in fact, Ashford learned the <laughs> rules of chess at age four, count it, four, with a computer game called Chess Kid and now spends up to seven hours a day on chess working with coaches. Oh he first made a name for himself. At six years old in 2022 by winning triple gold in the under six category of the Eastern Asian Youth Championship. It turns out there's a lot of strong chess players under the age of 10. Prodigies are getting younger and younger. In fact, experts say eight is the new 12. Wow. Eight is the new 12. Um, I mean, <laughs> wild. Wild. Um, okay. Ashworth goals. What were, what were his goals? Mm -hmm. Get his candidate master title. This is his goals. Reach 2,700 mm -hmm. in ranking by playing attacking chess uh, and, mm -hmm. quote, become the world champion. So that's that's what he's after. Um, I hope his goals also include, like, playing some kickball. I'm just like, – <laughs> I'm very happy for him. <laughs> but, yes. like, seven hours a day, like, oh, man. Oh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. It's a hey, lot of work for, for a kiddo to be – be turning on for chess in so. all fairness i watch about seven yeah. hours of rick and morty a day so you know it that's true i probably spend about seven hours on instagram so that's probably <laughs> probably better while spent <laughs> learning <laughs> learning opening moves congratulations to to ashwat that's really really awesome um i mean why i mean it gives me some hope for humanity right like we're all worried that ai like maybe like also our humans are getting smarter <laughs> like yes. is there a world in which that's happening we're having like some sort of x-men style evolutionary leap in these children and they're becoming little um you know professor x's and uh geniuses is that possible hey man i'm telling you eight is the new 12 so. well congratulations you are the daisy yeah. of the week and folks that is our show as always if you want to see our lovely faces, all the VOD, VOD, and other ways you can hang out with us are in the show notes. Could you do us a huge favor? Could you do me a personal favor? Could you please Come rate on. and comment on the show? Love because it really, really helps. Comments, suggestions, and feedback can, of course, be sent to us on the and Funny Discord. Or if you want to use that old school email, abcdpodcastshow at gmail.com. <laughs> yes, we want those emails. It's season two, and we have still – we haven't gotten an email, you guys. I think that one's easy. <laughs> we have, people are on Discord, so that's something. But we still have an email. So here are things you could maybe send us, like some Daisy of the Week suggestions. Um, Beautiful. Sometimes we do a segment, this versus that. You can send us ideas, mm -hmm. you know, chai versus coffee, ketchup versus chutney, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just, or, you know, uh, other um, uh, other holidays where people tie their mothers up to their beds. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> whenever you got, we're here for it. Uh, hit us up. Yes, yes, yes. And folks, of course, we want to say a huge shout out and thank you to our Patreon supporters. In How fact, we, we are now about to sing this? the songs of your name with this song. So the genre, genre or the... style yeah. that mm -hmm. was suggested for you is to read them baffled. Read the names as if you cannot understand <laughs> or believe what you are reading. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Okay. All right. Take it away, Sandeep. <laughs> Shout out to our Patreons, uh, Joshua o Orion, Tall BM, Carl, Carl, Carlo, Benjamin Lowe, Miranda Ho Hollinger, Michael Long, Raylan. That can't be right. Fox, Selena, <laughs> not A, not C, B, Nervous Rex, Sarah. Sa what Omar Sarah H Decker Catuplet Varun Moldivor are these even are you even are I'm they ringing any Phil bells Dizon. I'm stuck on Kathleen Schlegel I'm stuck on Ducati yeah okay you, you're stuck <laughs> I mean I don't even think Reverend Contino are that makes sense I don't think that's a those are syllables that make a thing Brandon Pace mm -hmm. Monroe Maxwell mm -hmm. Jeremy Schwartz Han Sol Solso uh, no <laughs> 
8 bit D. 8 bit I saw 8 bit D in concert in 1997. That doesn't make any sense. Chris Sims. I went to school Wait. with Chris Sims. What do you mean that that's the name of the, the person who lives next to me's kid? Dane Wally? I but I thought we found Dane Wally. Christina Romero is an anagram for for, for my heart my heart's true love. Mm-hmm. Zach is just a first mm-hmm. name. Danny's Corner, Fish, mm-hmm. Legion 247. What? What is even happening right now? I'm I'm a beautiful minding. Hold on, wait a second. What is I'm together? holding up the letter to the flame and letters are appearing. Jeremy O'Brien written in invisible ink, followed by Astra uh, on the Declaration of Independence. I've got Brendan Bradley over here. Oh my gosh, I think if I say these names fast Three times uh-huh. fast into a mirror, everything's going to change. Scribbles and flapjacks. Scribbles and flapjacks. Scribbles and flapjacks. No, I didn't do anything. Vaden, Death Queen, Vax, Delvin, Nelville? Nelville? That's what it's written here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We definitely nailed the tone on that last one. <laughs> that's, 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 last name. that's my favorite. The spell. We got it in the end, folks. We got okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> All right, you goofs. Uh, for those in the live chat, thanks for hanging out. Um, like we said, if you are on the Patreon, if you want to join the Patreon, we're going to drop Indrani's full episode, a uh, full interview mm-hmm. on that. So please check that out. Um, as always, this show is produced by Anand Shah and Kayla Mahoney. The show's technical director and sound designer is Delvin Neville. The show's executive, so a totally different person. I'm just saying that they're two different people. Right, yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know who Delvin is. Uh, the show's executive producers are me and Anand Shah, <laughs> edited by Sean Mayer. Uh, music by Herschel Sisodia. Uh, I said his name wrong again. That's so amazing. <laughs> edited by Sean Marr. Uh, music by <laughs> Herschel Sisodia, Jasper <laughs> Singh, and <laughs> Malik Zaveri. This has been an effing funny production. We did it, you guys. <sighs> On behalf of our co-host... Sunday Not Parikh, I've been your host, Omar Najam, until my long. concession speech as the buddy. May your chakras be aligned and smothered in chutney. Let's go.